Hello, my name is Paul and today I'm going to demonstrate one method in which you can potentially create a walk cycle using Adobe Flash Professional. And this is a potential finished product in which you can create, whereas I've got an animated uh, character that sits in its own movie clip and also an animated background. So if you hit Control Enter to preview that, you can see the character just continuously loops. It has a drop shadow effect applied to it and an animated background being the cityscape. Now if I head over to my library and double click on the actual walk cycle character, you can see how it's broken down into a series of tweens and poses and each limb is separated through each layer. And this started off very simply. Um, if I go back into previous uh, projects, this is essentially how it started. The legs were separated into three separate symbols and they were very primitive shapes. If I hit control enter, you can see how the two legs animate in an 80 frame continuous loop. And then if I move on a little bit further in the project, you can see we've added the, bo uh, the body, the head, and also the two arms, which animate once again in an 80 frame looped walk cycle. And then once we had the basic structure and the animation complete, then we refined each of the symbols and added various effects like drop shadows. Now to make this a little bit easier, I have supplied a series of guides in which are available uh, via the links below. You can download this particular file here, which contains guides to assist you with this project. So let's get started. Now, if you've clicked the link below and you have accessed the file called walkcycletemplate.fla, basically you'll be presented with this when you open it up. It only consists of a walk cycle movie clip and some guides that are placed conveniently and just in a folder. So to get started, you'll have to click on the double uh, on the walk cycle movie clip. And basically the way that I constructed it is that for every five keyframes, there is a static image in which we'll be basically tracing over. This consists of 40 frames and conveniently the first frame looks exactly like the 40th frame. So the idea is when we hit control enter we will see a continuous loop. Now before we get started I might head back to scene one and just place the walk cycle movie clip inside our scene one. So every time we hit control enter from now on, we'll basically be able to see what, uh, how we're progressing. If I head back over to the walk cycle movie clip, at the moment, this particular lay here is set as a guide, as you can see by this little icon here. That basically means that if I do hit control enter, this layer will not be seen in the finished product. I've also placed another layer called a ground, which just consists of this line. So it allows us to, it's almost like a reference point. So we know where to place the, the feet and when to make contact with the ground. So I'm going to start all the way back to frame one and I'm going to start a new layer and we'll call this one. And I'll just move that up to the foreground and call this right leg. So obviously with this leg, uh, with this particular layer, we're going to focus purely on this particular limb here. And I found the best way to go about this is just to divide all the limbs up um, into separate layers and work on them one by one and animate them one by one. So make sure right legs is selected and we'll just zoom into the right leg uh, guide. And what we're going to do is just use some primitive shape tools to construct the leg into three separate symbols. So we're going to work on the upper leg, lower leg, and foot. If you wish, you can perhaps add another symbol and uh, for the toe, um, if you want to challenge yourself a little bit more, though, but in this case, we'll just uh, work on the three. So we'll head over to the rectangle tool. And before I start drawing, I'm going to head over to properties and just choose a brighter color and we don't necessarily need an outline so I'll just turn that off and what I'm going to do is just add some rounded edges I think about seven is a good number so the purposes of that is when the idea is to overlap the limbs so the upper leg and the lower leg should overlap and if it's got a nice rounded edge to it when the limb bends you just get a nice sort of uh, uh, it just looks a little bit more fluid and you don't get white gaps in between each limb. So I'm going to start by drawing 
just the top layer. And before I do, I'm just going to make sure that my object drawing is turned on. So down here, we can turn this little icon on and off. And I know I've got object drawing on because it's got this blue bounding box around this limb and that's exactly what we want. We don't want our limbs to join together or merge. So I'm working in object drawing so it keeps all my limbs separate. So I've drawn my first limb and I'll just zoom in a, a little bit more and I'm going to use the free transform tool to try to rotate this and move it into place. And I'm moving just a little bit beyond. I don't mind overlapping the lower leg and I certainly don't mind stretching it just above the hip. And right about there is all that we really need. So that's going to be our upper right leg. I'm going to move on uh, to creating the lower leg and I might just change the color slightly on my new rectangle. And just make it a slightly light, lighter color. Now it might mean that you might need to draw it out just off to the side here before getting your free transform tool and moving it into place. Now try to get all your limbs nice and consistent, certainly in width, not necessarily in length, but, uh, but what you, your idea is to overlap each of the limbs. So as I said, when the knee joint bends, you don't get some white gaps in between the limbs. So I'll just put that into place and now we just need one more limb for the foot. Once again, I'll just change it to a lighter blue. And I'll just draw that roughly in place and then position it with my free transform tool. Now I've drawn these guides, but they are, as I said, just simply guides. They it might be a, a little bit difficult to get them exactly in place. doesn't have to be perfect and we can refine it a little bit later. So with those three limbs in place, I'll just zoom out. Now I'm going to convert them into symbols. So because we've been working in object drawing, I can easily select those three symbols individually, those three graphics individually. So one by one, I'm going to work with uh, the foot to begin with and click F8 and convert this into a symbol and we'll call this right foot hit f8 right lower leg and hit enter making sure that when you hit f8 the type is set to graphic and certainly not movie clip and right upper leg now just to confirm that we've those symbols are set up correctly, we can head over to our library and now you can see, as well as our guides folder and our walk cycle movie clip, we have now got three extra symbols that make up our leg. Now, at the moment, if we head back to scene one and just preview what we're, uh, how we're progressing, not much is happening though, but you can actually see how our character is uh, being created. So I'll head back over to the walk cycle movie clip and what we're going to use is a great tool that's been recently introduced into the later versions of Adobe Flash, and that is the Bone tool. So we're going to connect them up using this particular tool here. Now, what we're going to do is the Bone tool essentially has to simulate how a real-life human, in this case, um, how their bones would attach to each and every limb. So in this case, I'm going to start from the very top, and my hip joint will be roughly around about here. And I'm going to attach this symbol to my lower leg, but round about where my knee would be and where it would bend. And hopefully it should connect to the lower leg. And now we're going to join that up with our last bone to our right foot. Now we want to attach it to the ankle because essentially these areas here are our pivot points. So basically what this bone tool does is it attaches each of the symbols together and it provides us with uh, pivot points for us to rotate these symbols on a specific axis. So the way that we know that this has been done correctly is we can see three bounding boxes around the three legs. So we know that they're all attached together with these two main bones. And we can test this by heading over towards our cursor and start to rotate them. 
and you can see how depending on where I click on the leg where it, whether it be here or on the foot you can rotate the leg on various points so it's a pretty cool effect now it's done something to our layers so down here we've now got essentially nothing in our right leg layer but what's happened is our symbols have been placed in a brand new layer that's been automatically converted because we've attached bones to it and it's called an armature layer now and you can tell it's uh, basically connected through um, the bone tool because now we've got this shade of yellow through our timeline so we've got this keyframe or a fancier term for this particular keyframe is called a pose and now we've got nothing in our right leg layer so essentially we can delete that if we want just to clean things up a little bit and rename this armature by double clicking on it right underscore leg now we've got one pose here and essentially what we want to do is move across five frames and wait for our uh, drawing or guide to change and what we're going to do is basically imitate this next pose now to do that we're going to select all our bones using the selection tool and we're going to try to rotate it into place now you've got to be really gentle because you certainly don't want to break bones apart and do anything sort of abnormal so you've just got to be very very gentle with it and try roughly to get it into place now we're seeing an obvious issue here because the character bounces down on contact with the ground so essentially we have to move the whole leg down uh, just a, just a little bit and to do that it's quite easy and it's a really good trick we just got to select all the bones and hold down control on the keyboard and shift the bones down so it can match up with the next guide now that's into place now we can preview our two poses now it's important that you preview the pose and how flows on to the next one before we move on to the next frame or pose so that's looking good so far and I'll move on to the tenth one now another important thing is not to get too confused with which leg you're trying to imitate I've shaded the uh, the left leg in grey and certainly the left arm in grey as well so it just makes it a bit easier to know which leg that you need to pose so what I do to begin with is I always try to shift it into place first using control making sure everything's selected and I'll move it across and it might be a little bit tricky to get it perfectly in place but I'll just try my absolute best and that's looking pretty good and now that's my third key pose done and then you can move on to the next one so just to speed things up a little bit I'm just going to move forward and right up until the 35th frame and then I'm going to stop there because I've got a nice little trick that will help us to create the 40th frame so I'm going to speed things up a little bit now Now I've gotten to this point here where my guide has stretched his leg out as the left uh, left leg um, sort of swings forward. So in this case, I've moved all my limbs into place, but I still feel as though that there's quite a big gap there before it meets up with the ground. So instead of moving the entire leg by selecting everything, I'm just going to select the bottom two limbs and hit control and stretch that down just a little bit so it leaves the upper leg in place and I'll do the same with the foot so just the fraction and I'll move on to 35 and that is also very much stretched out so I'll just move everything into place and now it leaves us with the final frame now the way this basically works is with the guides you will notice that the very first keyframe or the very first guide looks exactly the same as the 40th or last keyframe in the guides layer 
So the reason for that being when we do hit control enter and preview this, this should animate in a continuous loop. So he'll just continue walking on and on and on. Uh, so to do to complete the final pose, the best way to go about it is to hit control and click on the first pose, right click, copy pose, and we'll paste it in frame number 40. So hit control and click just to get that individual frame, right click and paste the pose. And that should help us to complete the first limb. So if you hit control enter, because we've already placed it into our the movie clip into our scene, you can now preview the first uh, limb completely animated using 40 frames. Now with the first leg complete, I would like to invite you to watch part two of this tutorial, which will be focusing on the completion of the body, arms and head. I'll see you soon.